Welcome back to On Shape Orientation. Today we're going to be talking about the equals and the midpoint constraint. So like always, let's get started with a sketch. We'll click that top plane, shift S to get a sketch started. Letter N to normalize our view and letter P to hide those planes. So uh, with this week, we're talking about these midpoint constraints. So if you follow me up here to the top, you will see that we have the equals and the midpoint. So hover over equals, the picture, the icon looks like an equal sign, and the letter E makes things equal. Make multiple lines equal in length or multiple arcs equal in radii. It says arcs, but it also counts for circles. Remember, arcs are just par uh, partial circles. If we move over to midpoint, it's going to be shift and M on your keyboard. And it lets you constrain a sketch point to the midpoint of a line or arc. Um, so we will show how these kind of work today. So. To get started, let's make some uh, geometry, okay? So I'm gonna do a circle, and I'm gonna give that circle a dimension of, uh, we'll go four inches. I'm gonna draw another couple circles, just all off randomly in space. Okay, now none of these circles have the same dimension. Only one of them is de de uh, defined right now and has a dimension of four inches. If I select all of them and then press the letter E, you will see that now they all are the same size. Um, I can click it and you look down here at the bottom and you will see how we have a diameter of four. Uh, click another one, We've still got a diameter of four. They're all the same diameter because we gave them that equals constraint. If I pull up here my show constraints, you'll see that all of these are equal to that original first one. Now, why would I want this? Well, let's say I have a bunch of bolt holes that all need to be the same size and they don't quite match up in a like a linear pattern or a circular pattern. Um, but I have these kind of all spaced out everywhere. I can change one. And so now these need to be a three inch hole. And now they all will scale down accordingly. Uh, maybe they need to be 0.5, right? And they'll all still keep scaling down. So that way your bolt holes will stay where they need to be without messing things up. So that's how I do uh, the equals command. Uh, same thing with lines. So if I have a bunch of lines and I just draw some lines all over the place, it doesn't matter what angle. Um, because it's only copying the distance dimension. It's not going to count angles into anything because if you have angles, the problem is, is it's giving two dimensions um, and this is just singular linear dimensions or the, di the dimension of the, the diameter of that circle. Um, so here I can go, uh, I want these two lines to be equal in length. If I zoom in, down here at the bottom, if I click this line, you'll see I have a length of 6.022. So if I click off of that one and click onto this one and look over here, again, I have 6.022. So it's the same dimension. Now, these are just these two. If I click this line, we have a dimension of 5.114. So those are not equal, okay? It's important to make sure that you have certain things equal to one another if that's exactly what you want. If not, don't add that constraint. Um, sometimes I make my students draw a rectangle and I don't tell them how big, or I make, make them make a square actually. And we know squares all need to have uh, the same dimension, right? That's what makes it a square. So I tell them to click all of these, and obviously that's not a square. We can see if I press equal, on all four of those sides, it's gonna make every single one of those lines equal to each other. So then now, if I were to go in and say 10, now I got a bigger square, okay? Um, obviously there's a rectangle tool and I can draw squares with the rectangle tool, so it's not practical to do this uh, for that, but certain pieces of geometry you have, you might have the sides of a part that match perfectly and they always need to be equal to one another. But then the arc, that comes off the side of it might be a different on the left side than it is on the right side. So, but we still want those heights to stay or whatever, right? So that's how you use the equals function. 
Um, moving on to our midpoint. So it's exactly what it says. Um, usually we're used to drawing a line and that measurement on that one, if we look down at the bottom was 11.122. So mathematically trying to find that midpoint, you would have to take that number, divide it by two and then go to the center, right? But we know that on shape kind of has this snap feature where I can just go straight to the midpoint, right? However, sometimes I want things to snap to a point. So I want this to be the midpoint of a line that I know that needs to be 15, right? So I could do dimension and then click this point and this point and force it to do half. So I could do 15 divided by two or just know the math, 7.5 from this point to this point. But we're all about saving time and saving clicks. So what we would do here is I would click the line that I want and click the point that I want to become the midpoint, okay? Click my midpoint or press Shift and M, and you'll see now that it is equally spaced across that line. If I were to do a, a measurement here from here to here, you'll see I got 7.5, and from here to here, I also have 7.5, and those are driven dimensions based off of the fact that we have that 15 inch driving dimension um, attached with that midpoint constraint. So that's kind of how you move uh, midpoints around. A cool thing you can do with midpoints though, um, is when we talk about arcs. So if I have an arc up here, and let's say, I'll just draw this right here. How do you find the center of that arc when it's not at a perfectly straight angle, right? I could go here and try to make it match, but how do I get perfectly centered to that arc? Well, that's what this, this feature is for. So if I click the point up here and this arc, and then I tell it midpoint, you will see that that center of that circle now from that line straight out, that's gonna give me half and half. So if I was cutting a slot and I only wanted it to go about, uh, I only wanted something to turn 90 degrees, that's how I would do that. Um, so I could come in and trim this piece and then now I have a, let's pull up a slot really quick turn this into a slot and make a path for I think like a like the clamp on a miter saw or something along those lines right so the midpoint feature works also on arcs shut off all these constraints um, let's delete this stuff and let's get started with a, uh, a practice drawing so these are really cool um, tools but where am I going to use it at, right? We've shown the equals constraint and we've shown the midpoint. And I know a lot of you guys are probably wondering, well, like, can't we just do it with a pattern? Couldn't we just do it with the, if we look up here, the linear pattern and that circular pattern, couldn't we just do that? You know, we could, but like I said, sometimes, and in this example we're going to use, it's not going to perfectly match um, a, a pattern. So, Here's the drawing, and I'm gonna put this in the, uh, the link in the description on this. Um, it's a very, very simple part, uh, but basically we have a circle with a diameter of six, and we have two sets of holes. And I was kind of thinking of this, like what if you made a mounting plate that you could swap directions on um, to allow for different uh, orientations of parts, or maybe one side it could hold a piece up one direction. And then if you turned it 90 degrees, those other bolt holes would line up with something else and it could move it out of the way or whatever. Right? So this is kind of a, a schematic of that. Um, our two vertical oriented holes are going to be five inches apart from that origin with uh, a 0.75 or a three quarter inch uh, diameter on that hole. And our horizontal holes are going to be four inches apart with a half inch or a 0.5 diameter. So you see there, this is what we need to draw. And I'm gonna kind of show you guys how to do that. So for starters, go back to our part studio. And I'm gonna start with a circle from my center point. I'm gonna make it six inches, okay? 
So we'll zoom in on that. Six inches, we'll clip top so it kind of makes it as big as we can. From there, if we go back to our schematic, I need to draw these lines. So we're gonna turn them into construction lines by pressing the letter Q. I draw a line and I know my line from side to side needs to be four. And we know that's not centered, right? But it's across my, my origin, which is what I want. And my line from top to bottom needs to be five. And that's sticking outside of my shape. So we know that's not centered correctly. Again, this is where we use our midpoint constraint. So I can click up here, but you know, I love using the keyboard, keyboard shortcuts. So I'm gonna click the line and my origin and press shift M. That one's now aligned. Do the same thing here. And with my origin and shift M again. Now I could have just drawn a line here, two inches from the origin. And then I guess I could have flipped it or I could have used the mirror feature. But the whole purpose of this is that we can show you how to make some geometry that isn't quite there, but always lines up with the midpoint. So um, now our next feature is going to tie in our equals function. So if we go back to our picture. I know my holes that are spaced to four inches from uh, center to center have a half inch diameter. So let's draw one half inch. And then down here, we're going to draw one that's three quarters. So we'll pick up here, draw a circle up here, 0.75, enter, draw here, 0.5, enter. Now, these other two, I'm just going to draw. And obviously, this one's supposed to be 0.5, but we know that's way bigger. And this one's the point, supposed to be 0.75. And we'll zoom in a whole bunch. And we know that's way smaller than what we're looking for. Okay. I'm going to press escape to get out of the circle command. I'm going to click my big circle on the left and my half inch circle on the right. And I'm going to press E for equals. And you'll see that now that shrunk. And I can do the same thing down here. Click my little circle, which is a diameter of 0.125 and my 0.75 circle up top. And I'm going to press E we now have those equally uh, constrained to one another. Uh, the cool part is now, if I were to ever change these bolt holes, I need to go back, I can double click, make these one inch bolt holes. You'll see that now those two move, but my other two don't. Where if I did this as a circular pattern, one, um, let's draw that circle. These circles aren't gonna match. If I draw a circle here, these ones are good, but if I draw the outer ring, you'll see obviously with the four inch uh, diameter or four inch spacing and the five inch spacing, they're two different types of circles. So uh, a full circular pattern wouldn't work. A linear pattern kind of would take too much. Um, I'd have to draw these circles. I'd have to dimension these circles. So I felt like this, for this example, it was easier to draw these lines like such. Um, if that spacing changed, I can just double click. Maybe this is now a two inch spacing. Um, change it back to four. Whatever you need to do, this is kind of the, the way to future proof your drawings. Um, to check on my, my drawing, I said it needs to be a of the shaded region. So if you zoom in, and again, you'll have access to this as a PDF in the description. Uh, it should be 26.998. So all our measurements, our units should be in inches. So if I select that to make the shaded region match, and we come down here to the bottom corner, you'll see area pops up as 26.998 square inches. I can click it and it's gonna give me even more decimal points. Um, but I try to only give you a certain tolerance and for this, this works fairly well. So 26.998 inches or square inches uh, is what we're looking for. So hopefully that'll be a good uh, thing for you to practice. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about, cause they added this after I started drawing and I made a little short on this, um, but it might help you save some time. And if the midpoint feature, you, you can't like, I have students sometimes that, that can't wrap their head around how to make things move to the midpoint and they just wish it would do it for them or they're coming from other programs or they've done other things. So if we look up here under the line tool, I've talked about this in a couple of videos, but we have this midpoint line now. Unfortunately, there's no shortcut key. 
but it's going to essentially do what you were uh, doing with the lines, making it midpoint. So I'm going to uh, shut this sketch off, hide it, start a new sketch so you can see it without the uh, stuff in the way. Start that midpoint line. And so like we did before, I clicked the origin and kind of drew out to the side, but it's already pre centered on that midpoint. So if I needed that four inch line here, and then I came up and did it again and did my five inch line this way, I can now select both of these, press Q. Those are my construction lines for those holes. Draw my holes here again, 0.5. Draw this one as 0.75. Draw these two. Remember, this one and this one need to be equal. This one and this one need to be equal as well. Draw another circle around the outside, six. And we get the same, go down here to the bottom, 26.998. So a little bit faster way to go about doing that. That midpoint tool is fairly new, I think, in the last three weeks, I want to say, is when it came out. Um, but practice with this, keep playing. Uh, Onshape is always changing. Like I said, it's open source. Um, and just play around with it. So next week, we will be talking about the normal, the pierce, and the symmetrical uh, constraints. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, keep, keep on practicing what you guys have been doing. I've, I'm loving the comments. I have some projects in mind um for some 3d and 2d i think after we finish this series i will uh just start doing some practice drawings maybe every week or every couple weeks to give you guys some some practice um but yeah it's going good i hope you guys are you're having fun and learning a lot so thanks for watching i'll see you guys next week